Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome to Train Simulator 2022 we're on now. Today we are going to be driving the brand new Class 185 from Alan Thompson Simulations and Imbu Studios and we're going to be driving the first part of a full run from Middlesbrough through to Liverpool Lime Street. So let's jump in the cab. Now uh, this is not a review before anybody says it's not a review and uh, the reason is that I've, uh, I've actually helped on the project a little bit uh, I have done some announcements for Imbu, not for Imbu, for, uh, for Alan Thompson. I, I am the voice of the announcements. A couple of the more observant amongst you have noticed uh, that it is yours truly. Just get a, a couple of, uh, get the cab set up. And uh, yeah, the announcements will not be featured in this video. That's another thing I need to, uh, I need to make quite clear. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I'll just get the uh, the Axiom code put in. 9005, there we go. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so we've got Liverpool on the front. That's all jolly good. And it does actually say Liverpool. It did say Liverpool Lime Street through testing. Uh, but we did uh, make the developers aware that it, it, it does always just say Liverpool. It says Lime Street on the side, I think. But uh, but yeah, so uh, yeah, here we are at Middlesbrough. Now, a couple of you will probably be thinking, hang on, Middlesbrough to Liverpool? That's that's not a thing. Uh, but it actually was a thing uh, back before May 2018. Transpennine Express, or first Transpennine Express, did run one service a day. The 631, which is one Foxtrot 82, uh, from Middlesbrough to Liverpool Lime Street. Uh, we're calling at quite a few stations en route today. Oh, hang on. Get that in. Uh, it, uh, it calls at Thornaby, Yarm, North Allerton, Thirsk, York, Crossgates, Leeds, Dewsbury, Huddersfield, Staley Bridge, Manchester, Piccadilly, Manchester, Oxford Road, Birchwood, Warrington Central, Liverpool South Parkway and Liverpool Lime Street. We're going to be doing the full run from Middlesbrough all the way to Liverpool. We're obviously missing the Leeds to Huddersfield section at this moment in time, but I'm sure we'll get that at some point in the future. Let's get it in forwards. Uh, yeah, reason we're not using the announcements is uh, number one. You've got me talking already, so you don't need me interrupting myself with announcements of where we are, because I'll just tell you where we are. Uh, so that's partly the reason why, and uh, also because they don't currently have a PIS code in the Axion uh, for Middlesbrough to Liverpool. <coughs> now whether that will be uploaded at a later date, I don't know, but uh, as we're missing the code, I can't put the announcements on, so... Uh, thought it, it seems a bit silly to do so. Uh, again, this isn't a review, partially because, like I say, I've helped on the project a little bit. I was a beta tester, and so I do kind of feel I would be biased, and it would be unfair for me to do a full review on it. It can be yours for the price of $24.99 from Alan Thompson Sim, and I do believe you get a discount if you're already a subscriber through that. There's a link in the description, as always, if you do want to go check that out. And uh, if you've not got Train Simulator, uh, then also check the link in the description because there's a link to uh, CD keys where you can get it a little bit cheaper. So uh, yeah, lots of links to lots of places for lots of things. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is a service that I've actually worked. We're uh, we're running one eight five one three three today on this train, not on this service. And uh, I've worked this service many a times. We used to. Uh, it was actually a York job. When I was a York conductor, I'm not a York conductor anymore. Uh, I am based elsewhere on the network. Uh, but yes, uh, it was a York job. You used to set off at like 4 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I, I should actually, for this 631, I should technically be a Newcastle driver. Uh, that was who it used to be. So uh, two York conductors would go up on... Uh, and this, this doesn't happen anymore. It's, it's a little bit different now. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, what used to happen, two York conductors would go up on a 185 uh, with one driver. You think, two conductors? Mm. Well, uh, that 185 would go via Darlington, so it'd go up so you know, you've been over the diversion. And uh, it would form the 528 from Middlesbrough to, uh, to Manchester Airport. And then one conductor would work that train. The other one would get off and have an hour in Middlesbrough at uh, half past five in the morning. Who doesn't want an hour in Middlesbrough at half past five in the morning? And uh, and then this unit that we're currently driving would actually come down from Heaton without a conductor. Empty stock from Heaton all the way down to Middlesbrough. And uh, the guard would jump on. It would form the 631 service. <coughs> and uh, this was obviously... 
back in the days of the old PIS system. And a little fun fact for you regarding this journey, uh, there was actually so many stops in the PIS system that, uh, that she couldn't remember them all. She, uh, she said, welcome to the first Trans Pennine Express service to Liverpool Lime Street. This train will be calling at uh, Thornaby, Yarm, North Allerton, Thirsk, York, Crossgates, Leeds, Dewsbury, Huddersfield, Staley Bridge, Manchester Piccadilly, and will continue too. Uh, now, as far as I'm aware, and uh, I, this is before I signed any of the, uh, any of the West Coast stuff, uh, so it could be the case of that it did it on a few services, but as far as I'm aware, this is the only train uh, that that we run that used to do that. Now I know that Southwest Trains 450 to zero units also have uh, a similar sort of thing, where the to zero PIS can't load them all, and uh, so she'd say and will continue too, and there'd be this long pause, and uh, and then eventually she'd say. Uh, Manchester Oxford Road, Birchwood, Warrington Central, Liverpool South Parkway, and Liverpool Lime Street. So uh, it's the only one that I've actually noticed it do it on. Oh, uh, yeah, little fun fact for you. <coughs> now, uh, I have made no secret of the fact that the 185 is my favourite train to... You know, it's just my favourite train. It's my favourite DMU, uh, which is partially why I, uh, I went to work on them as a conductor and hopefully one day a driver. I mean, I'd like to hope that this would demonstrate uh, I, I could use this video as a look, I can drive a 185, hire me. And I don't think that that's quite how it works, um, but, uh, but yeah, it'd be nice if it did work like that, wouldn't it? I mean, I've got some pretty exemplary, uh, exemplary videos on driving trains, not missing stops or derailing class 68s. No sirree, I do not. Uh, exemplary train driver here. Uh, but yeah, I, I thoroughly would recommend this unit. It's not perfect by any stretch. Uh, you know, we wanted to get some proper sounds recorded, you know, like um, uh, what are they called, Amstrad Powerhouse. They go on the depots, don't they, and record. But unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions, it's been a little bit difficult obtaining that. Never say never, it might one day happen. Uh, but of course, we don't know what's happening with regards to COVID yet. You know, there's so many things that the government don't seem to know. They're doing left, right and centre, just making it up as they go along, aren't they? So, uh, yeah, never say never. Uh, but, um, but at this moment in time, I think that they've actually done incredibly well <coughs> to get the sounds that they've got. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a mystery to me. I'm a complete ignoramus when it comes to this sort of stuff. I mean, uh, there we go, we'll, we'll get the doors open. I mean, look at that animation on the doors. It's more, I mean, it jumps a tiny little bit, but I'm sure that that's, uh, I'm sure we can live with that. Now, my, uh, my problem with the doors, if you look, they all shut simultaneously. I mean, it's a very, very good animation, but they all shut perfectly together. And, uh, and of course, if you've ever seen a 185, or any zero unit for that matter, it's not the case, they all kind of shut at their own speed. Now, it would be absolutely fantastic if the developers could add that in at some point, where when the door's shut, I mean, for instance, <coughs> excuse me, I don't even know if it's possible, but if you look at the windscreen wipers when you put them on, they move independently at different speeds. <coughs> now, that's a nice little feature, and apparently, from what I've been told, uh, that will generate a number each time you load train sim. Uh, so that'll be like 1 to 9, 1 being really slow, 9 being really fast. And same again on that window. And it will be totally random every time you load a scenario with this thing. Uh, now, that's nuts. It's absolutely nuts, it's that. Completely. Um, but I would quite like it if they could... I don't even know if it's possible, like I say. But it would be nice. Oh, that's a picture. Lovely. Uh, it would be nice if they could get each door down the length of the train to generate a random number for how fast or slow it shuts. I mean, that'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Like I say, that, that's not a, a definite. I actually get told very little about what's upcoming and what's happening. Uh, I'm just here purely for uh, to sit and poke holes in it. Just what beta testers do, innit? You, you drive it, you poke holes in it, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, and then they go away and fix it. Or they tell you that you're uh, you're a pernickety so and so, uh, and you're, you're a bit pedantic, which uh, for, for in a lot of cases was me. Joe, go away! You're too pedantic. 
But uh, yeah, with the, again, with this being my favourite type of unit uh, in in the whole existence of the world, I mean, I'm, I'm quite partial to 158s. I like 158s as well. But uh, but yeah, the 185 is my favourite unit. I just think there's something about them. They're absolutely stunning trains. <coughs> so again, perhaps I'm a little bit biased in that way. Uh, again, working on them. Uh, I, I, I guess that that's why I was asked to be a beta tester, because, you know, I, I'm quite fortunate. I mean, I've never driven one before, you say, but, you know, I, I get to see a, a few... You, there's certain aspects of 185 inch. Uh, the sounds, when, when I first got to drive them, or when I first got to drive the train, were, were not particularly brilliant. I mean, I, I don't know if they were ever intended for release with that sound, but I, I did kind of say, look, it's a brilliant unit. Those sounds are a little bit odd. And they came back with these, which were so much better. I mean, like I say, it'd be even better if one day we could get a recording session on uh, on the uh, on an actual 185 and just really go all Armstrong powerhouse on this thing. Uh, but yeah, at this moment in time, I think that we're not doing bad for what we've got. <coughs> and it's actually quite weird. Uh, this used to be uh, this used to be my favourite line to work when I was a York conductor, unfortunately being base where I'm based now, uh, we don't get up to Middlesbrough, I mean obviously the trains go through to to, uh, to Redcar now, don't they, Redcar Central uh, whereas so, so I'd never actually been up to Redcar, I've worked many a train to Middlesbrough and uh, so this is a route for me I, I actually got my friend to make me this scenario, uh, Harry he makes a lot of scenarios. Uh, I don't know if he ever actually uploads them or if they're just for, uh, for personal use, but he does make some very good scenarios. And uh, I don't know if it says... Uh, yeah, there we go. Middlesbrough, Liverpool, Lime Street. It does not say when it was. I think it was set in about 2017, this one, if I remember. Uh, no, it won't be. It'll be before that. No, oh, hang on. Get the DSD done. It'll be before that because we've got the old logo on. Uh, so to be honest with you, I don't know when this is. It's under the old franchises, uh, for sure. So we've got uh, Abellio Circo Northern and uh, First Keolis Transpennine Express. It was my favourite era of the railways, to be honest with you. <coughs> I mean, it has to be said, I love this livery. I think the 185 looks absolutely amazing in it. And uh, I've delivery, you know, the livery that they're wearing now is, is quite nice, but I just don't think it's as good as this. This is, uh, oh, hang on, uh, there we go. Yeah, I just don't think it's as good as this. You, this livery was so striking. I, I just don't think the current livery is as good. I don't think it's a bad livery. I just, it's just fantastic, it's this. So uh, again, yeah, if you if you do get hold of uh, of this pack, it comes with virtually every livery uh, that the 185s have ever worn. Now uh, I think it is more or less, yeah, it is literally every livery the 185s have ever worn. Uh, a couple that I've noticed that they're missing is, uh, or the livery I've noticed that they're missing is the Liverpool Capital of Culture. It had like kind of, it looked like someone had kind of poured jelly over the top. There were little pink lines along the top. And uh, I did ask about that one. That one apparently it's due to uh, uh, too many missing. Uh, there's no, there's not enough reference material basically uh, for them to do that one. But you get more or less every other livery. And I've just noticed that that window, for some reason, is not transparent. Very odd. Very odd. But, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? I have taken so many screenshots of this thing because it just, it just so good. It's really nice indeed. It also comes with a passenger view, you see that there, and if you're on a refurb unit, it will have a refurbished passenger view, which is lovely. And we've got a couple of different uh, couple of different views, so you can sit going either forwards or backwards, no matter the orientation of your train. And uh, one thing as well, these maps in the old version, or the old livery, it has the old map in the new version, it has the new map. Uh, so yeah, brilliant, brilliant indeed, lovely maps. So we're just pulling into Yarm now. <clears throat> I believe that Yarm has had the platforms extended since uh, since this particular version of the route was brought out. We're using North East England. Uh, so yeah, Yarm does have slightly longer platforms. I think it was at the far end of the platform that they've extended it. 
I think you can uh, you can fit a four car, maybe a five car train on there. So yeah, yams going up in the world, well and truly. There we go. So we can only just fit a three car. <coughs> Excuse me. I think perhaps I've uh, I've stopped a bit short. Oh yeah, my conductor's going to be kicking off. There we go. Six on the buzzer. Bit late now, I've already drawn forward. I guess I have to repeat back to the conductor, don't I? Right, there we go. So let's get the doors open. Aha! Brilliant. I mean, just look at that. I, I can't get over the modelling. I mean, Jake Fuller did an amazing job, uh, and, uh, and Mr. Finchie. Uh, did an absolutely amazing job with the, the 185 that's been tidying us over, but it just does not compare to this at all, does it? It's just... I mean, some people might accuse me of being a sadder, you know, working all day on these things and then coming home and, uh, you know, driving them. But it's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, let's, uh, let's have a look on the outside now. We'll do a cheeky little set-off. There we go. Notch one. Notch two. Oh, sod it. Full power. Oh, listen to that. And if you look, I've got it in max power. And at 20 mile an hour, the revs will go up. Because you don't actually get max until 20. There we go. See? Oh, lovely, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. And that is a really nice little feature that it's got there. <coughs> Excuse me. I to think of other things to show you. I mean, uh, I'm, I'll probably get told off, like, oh, you didn't show them this, you didn't show them that. I mean, to be fair, Alan Thompson has covered most of the stuff in depth on his uh, on his channel. I'm just driving the thing. Uh, but yeah, fully functioning TMS. You've got uh, door system, brake system, driving. I mean, I don't tend to use any of that, but it's there if you like to fiddle around with it. It's got a working GSMR. Again, I never bother putting anything in there. I know I probably should. Oh, hang on. We're, uh, we're speeding. Get a bit of the old brakes on. Speed set. We'll get that on as well. Uh, speed set as well, yeah, if you fancy being a bit lazy. Uh, it's really, really useful feature, actually. Hang on. Why are we... Why is speed set not worked? Have I... Did I cock that up? There we go. Engaging. Speed set should work. Uh, they don't actually have, I mean, we've got cab lights. Lovely. Uh, cab lights can be activated via either that button. There we go. Or you have got, uh, you can actually press that down. Now there's a way to do it. There you go. Press that down. Or turn it to there. And you get these nice little lights here. Uh, now the speedo lights don't light up. None of this lights up. But you get the little kind of top down lights. They're little, like little spotlights tucked under there. It's, uh, it's a really nice... What a nice thing to have. It's very atmospheric. And uh, it's quite nice at night as well. There we go, so we're racing along to North Allerton now. <coughs> well, nearly missed that. Got, uh, I've got a glass of orange juice just in the way. Nearly sent it flying across the room. But uh, yeah, so in this video we're obviously travelling down to York. And uh, what we've also got uh, next time, we will be doing York to Leeds. And then we'll be doing Huddersfield to Manchester, and then Manchester, sorry, I should specify, Huddersfield to Manchester Piccadilly, and then uh, Manchester Piccadilly to Liverpool via Warrington Central. <coughs> now, uh, Harry has actually sent me all of the scenarios, and I have already driven it all the way down. It's, uh, yeah, they're really, really nice scenarios. He's good at what he does. He should probably sell them. Be good. Uh, sell them for a bit of money. I'd pay money for his scenarios. Let's, uh, let's put that idea in his head, shall we? 
And uh, you're probably thinking, oh, I've, I've, well, we've not seen an awful lot of traffic, have we? But to be absolutely honest with you, this section between York and North, uh, not like York and North Allerton, uh, between North Allerton and Yarm, you've only got one Transpennine an hour in either direction, and then a rogue Grand Central that occasionally, uh, I don't really know what the frequency is with those guys. Um, there's kind of, is a five a day in each direction? Uh, but then you've got like, I, I, I don't know if there is a frequency at all. Uh, or if they kind of turn up as and when. And I always really struggle with um, with learning the route between North Allerton and Yarm. Because there's not an awful lot round here that you can use for references, I always found. I mean, looking out the window, if we're, yeah, we're over in there, there's, there's fields and the odd tree. And then if we look that way, there's fields and the odd tree. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of fields and token trees. I mean, of course, there's level crossings. I think there's about five or six level crossings uh, off the top of my head. It's uh, three years now since I've worked to train up to Middlesbrough. Uh, so please, uh, you know, my route knowledge is a little rusty around here. But yeah, I always found that I, I struggled the most between North Allerton and Yarm. Purely on the basis of, there's just not a lot of reference points. You know, like when you're, for instance, when you're between Huddersfield and Manchester, you've got Slough Marsden, Greenfield, Molesley, Staley Bridge, Piccadilly... Uh, of course, you've got your little stations like Guy Bridge, Fairfield Gort, and Ashbury's Hardwick. So there's, you know, there's lots of little stations on route that you can kind of, oh, I know where we are now, oh, I know where that is. Bridges, tunnels, viaducts, there's just none of that really. I mean, there's the, uh, there's the viaduct before Yarm, which I've just realised we missed because I was looking inside the train at the time. Um, that's a shame because Yarm Viaduct is absolutely lovely. And uh, I've often looked down into Yarm and thought, Do you know what, that looks like a really nice little place, I should visit that. Uh, but Yarm Station is actually friggin' miles away from, uh, from Yarm. And apparently, Eagles Cliff, if you're going to Yarm, you're better off going to Eagles Cliff, uh, rather than actually going to Yarm Station. So that, another little factoid for you. Uh, North Allerton and Thirsk are also flipping miles away. Uh, but I guess at North Allerton and Thirsk were kind of just plonked on the East Coast main line, weren't they? <coughs> I guess the East Coast main line probably came first. And they just happened to be put on. It's more of a, uh, a Thirsk Parkway. It's about here where there's another 185 due the other way. They tend to cross between uh, Yarm and North Allerton. Have we seen one yet and I'm just forgetting about it? I don't think we have. Can't believe we've been driving for 20 minutes already. I mean, that's just nuts, isn't it? You tend to find this is kind of a bit more... It's a bit more of a regional line. Um, you know, you, you don't get up to an awful lot of speed on this run. There we go, we'll just ease off. You've also got to be really, really careful uh, on, on this run. Because, uh, or when driving this train, sorry. Because it does have a working, uh, a, a working TPWS, that's what I'm trying to say. It has a working TPWS, so if you go over a grid too fast, it'll slam the emergency brakes on. You'll come ground into a halt, or ground into a halt. You'll come to a very quick stop, basically. You'll have uh, people in first class filling tea and coffee everywhere.
just uh, just slowing down now for North Allerton. You uh, you kind of get to this little straight bit, and uh, I don't know if it was timetabled like this or if uh, I'll, I'll point out the bit to you in a moment. We'll speed up to sixty. I don't think we're going to get to sixty, to be honest with you. But uh, you know, I like to run on time. Let's have a look. How are we doing? Oh, I didn't stop at Yarm. I think you'll find I did. It's all right. I'm not that bothered because uh, I have already completed the scenario and got a proper tick on it. So uh, you know, it, c it can go to hell because I've done it already. What time are we actually doing? Fifty-eight. Oh, well, at least I know that I'm going to get a ticket at North Allerton. So it's slowing back down to 45, and then it goes back up to 60. It's uh, You don't really notice it on the train. I think some drivers just stick at 45 down here. Uh, you know, just because just there's no point razzing it up to 60 to then slow down again. Uh, I'm sure that you just kind of... Uh, uh, you, you, do you know what? It's weird when, you, when you're in the train checking tickets... You don't always notice the speed increases and decreases. You know, kind of when you you just coasting along and you can you can feel it. But like back there, I can't remember whether you used to actually feel the driver accelerate, brake, or if it it was it always felt a bit smoother. You know what I mean? There we go, pop a bit of braking in for the 50. And it's weird because as well, if you actually look at the route when, when we're slowing down to like 45 and 40, there's not actually that many corners really, it's, it's not a particularly aggressive corner. I mean this bit where we slow down for 40 is because uh, we're about to join the East Coast Main Line at this point. And uh, not this signal that's coming up, but the signal after. Uh, between the 40 and the 125, you can just see it on the uh, on the uh, the route display screen there. Uh, you used to find that you'd sit for a long time waiting at that signal, because obviously LNERs and uh, and cross country on this section of the route do take priority over Trans Pennine, because obviously uh, if you look when we come into North Allerton, we will be blocking the platform. So if you've got a cross country coming southbound at like say 100. 110, 125 mile an hour. Uh, then it makes sense for, to hold us here than it does to, to bring that down to a stand so that we can take up the platform. There we go, so we're just coming into North Allerton. You can see we're joining the wires now. And we'll be under the wires all the way down to York. And if you listen, you do also get the regenerative braking. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. And the good thing about these units, I mean, I say the good thing. There's quite a lot of good things about them. Uh, but you, you literally, if you're not sure, I mean, like there, North Allerton, you could probably enter this station at about 80 mile an hour and pop the brake in full service and still stop. There we go, we'll, uh, we'll unlock the doors there. So as you can see now, we are blocking the platform. Uh, so there's just the two platforms. And uh, this one's for going south, that one's for going north. And then just after the station, it'll branch out into the uh, the four track that we've come to know and love. What's this coming the other way? Is it something uh, something posh? I believe it's an East Coast of some kind. You've got that light grey. Oh, it's an East Coast 91. Look at him. Oh, he's not hanging about, is he? So it's got to be set around 2013, 2014 in this scenario. Oh, I should technically have it in full service and in, uh, in neutral. Not reverse, neutral. There we go. 
What time are we due out? 6.58. Come on, guard. Get doors shut. It's time to go. In your own time. There we go. We're a minute late now. We'll have control ringing us asking why we're a minute late. There we go. We'll just raz it into full power. Did we get a tick? Yes, we did. So we've obviously got the feather on the signal now, or the uh, the junction indicator. Uh, so we're going to be going onto the slows where it's max speed of 70. Uh, yeah, I'm just reading the sign, just like you did, uh, and then it goes to uh, then it goes to 90. Yeah, I can read. I can read, and uh, and then that's obviously the fast there. Now I don't think on this early morning when we get anything overtaking us, but usually you have to wait a thirst while uh, something else fast goes southbound. There we go, get a bit of the old uh, speed set on. There's probably not much point actually, is there? Because we're going to go up to 90 in a second. Oh, well, it's not like it costs us to put it on. Get that out of the way. So. Right here, full power. Got as fast as we'll have gone. Should we go forward? We can sit that side as well. I mean, look at that. It's it's such a good interior, isn't it? I remember working these trains in this livery, uh, this livery, yeah, and this interior. It it oh, the, it it was just a lovely time. It, the the one eight fives were so good in that old colour scheme. I really did like them. I actually asked my manager in uh, in the interview, or my, my manager to be. I didn't know at the time, uh, but in the interview, you know when you know when you're doing an interview, and they say at the end, uh, "Have you got any questions for us?" Uh, and you're meant to ask some sort of a question, uh, like I don't I don't know I don't know, but you you would think of a good question, wouldn't you, to ask your uh, your potential future employer, something that makes you sound intelligent, something that makes you sound worldly. But, but also, you, you know the sort that I mean. Um, and uh, my, my manager, she, she said at the end of the interview, have you got any questions for us? And at the time, it was when the new livery was rolling out. <coughs> and uh, we, we hadn't seen the new interior yet, but the new livery for the new franchise was rolling out. So we're, we're talking January 2017, I think, of my interview. And, um, and I said... So uh, to my manager, I says, um, yes, uh, I do actually have a, a really burning question. She went, oh, right, okay, go on. I says, if I was lucky enough to uh, to get the job, I says, would I get to work a train in, uh, would I get to work a 185 in the Dynamic Lines livery? Or would they all be in the new livery by this point? And, uh, and she just laughed. And to be honest, I'm, I'm still convinced to this day that that question uh, obviously made me quite memorable because nobody else in the interviews was probably as sad as I was. Um, but yeah, the strike in livery, I wanted to work a 185 in that livery and I got to do so. I believe uh, 185 110 was the last train, the last 185 to wear that livery uh, before they were all repainted, but I got to do that. So that's, you know, a little life goal. I don't know if they'll ever wear that livery again, maybe on a preserved railway one day. Oh Christ, the thought of that. Uh, but yeah, it just goes to show how much Joe loves the diamond, uh, the dynamics, the dynamic lines livery. And uh, you know, I liked it on the 350s as well, but the 185s just look perfect in that livery. It's 
See, I, what I find is that the... Um, oh, there we go, don't miss the DSD, because it's an absolute ball ache to get it back up to speed. Uh, what I find is the new livery suits the, the pointy nose trains better. Uh, I think like on the 397s, the 802s, the new livery looks really, really good on those. I don't necessarily know if dynamic lines would look good on those trains. It might look a bit weird. But the 185s, I just think that this livery suits it a lot more. It's a shame we couldn't have had like one of each, and we could have had the, the Transpennine nippy diesel train livery, i.e. the 185s, and then the Transpennine pointy nose rocket train livery, which would be obviously the new stuff. Uh, I wish I could say that I thought of those names, I did not, but I, uh, I really do like them. There we go, get a bit of, bit of hornage. Yeah, the nippy diesel train livery and the Transpennine pointy nose rocket train livery. We should have had both. Should have had both. Oh, what we're we getting? Uh, ah, right, cause we're dropping down to forty. Right, well, we'll uh, we'll have a bit of bit of breaking. Seven or nine. <coughs> My goodness me, we're running really early, aren't we? And I can tell you why that is, because obviously on the southbound journey, like I say, you arrive at seven oh. Yeah, I mean we're gonna. Oh, hang on. Nope, don't save it. Oh yes, sausage. Uh, you're, uh, I've lost my train of thought. Aha, funny, funny guy. Uh, yes, um, you used to arrive at like 7.05 and you wouldn't leave till 10 past because there'd be something, something fast overtaking you. Whereas at this time, uh, you don't get anything fast overtaking you. There we go. I guess there's no need to. Uh, there's no real need to come blasting in, is there? Uh, Thursk Station always kind of surprises me a little bit. It, it, it kind of. I never really understood it. Because if you look, we'll we'll stop here. I mean that's perfect, isn't it? That's a perfect stop. And the reason it's a perfect stop is because we could just see the signal. But if you look, there's kind of. Oh dear me, that's uh, some eyes and some lips. That's a bit frightening. That is the back of my head. I appear to be a young woman today. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, so there we are. We're, uh, we're 185 and loving life. And uh, if you look, I don't know if we can... Oh yeah, you can fit a six car 185. Coming south, you can just about do it. Uh, but if you look, there's, there's kind of... All this platform... Say the signal was red. There's all this platform that's wasted. That you just can't use. And it just seems logical to me, which is probably why it's not been done, because the railway seems to love uh, not acting upon logic. But it seems more logical to me that the signal would be there, so that you could use the full length of the platform. Uh, does anybody know why the signal is not there? I, I don't know myself. There's no reason, but there might be a reason. Uh, but yeah, if you do know why the signal's there and not at the bridge, please let me know in the comments. I'm, uh, I'm always eager to learn the routes that I work over. I mean, I, I'd like to think... We're, we're meant to have a pretty high standard of route knowledge, and I'd like to think that I do. Uh, but there's little things like that that obviously you don't get taught. Because could you imagine if you had to know all the route, but then you had to know why each thing was in each place? I mean, that would just be mental, wouldn't it? Oh, in your own time. Feels a little bit weird, doesn't it? Just sat here waiting for things to happen. Have I got a conductor on at the back? Nope, oh, hang on. Nope. Oh, they must be in the train then doing tickets. Uh, one thing that we've also got, if you look, we... Uh, there we go. We can we can just pop the T-key in. Oh, and they've corrected it as well. If you look, the, the T-key, there we go. Uh, that's the closed door button. They, uh, they did have this end bit plugged in there, but uh, we did say it was wrong, and now it's correct. Wow!
There we go. Let's go and look back out the front, please. Thank you very much. Oh dear me. See, we've got the signal, like I said, there should be something fast coming past us. And the problem we've got is, because um, it's early in the morning, there's not an awful lot to see at this time. I mean, we saw the East Coast coming past us. I think the next thing is just leaving York now, the, uh, the 708 from uh, from York, which is a Transpennine to Newcastle. Then there's a 715 to Middlesbrough, because uh, that was back in the days where the Middlesbroughs went at quarter past, the Newcastles went at eight past. Uh, I used to actually know the timetable because you know I'm in, I mean now I kind of do just from the trends I've worked so north of uh, North York I don't really know the timetable because I, I don't work North of York anymore it's very sad actually I'd like to if they said to us tomorrow would you like to sign Middlesbrough or would you like to sign Newcastle I'd be like oh yeah absolutely because, uh, as well, it was really nice, particularly on a Newcastle, when you got north of York, it was a little bit quieter. Because I know between York and Manchester, it can sometimes be absolutely mental. But it'd be a little bit quieter, and you'd be travelling at 100 miles an hour up the East Coast Main Line. So you really felt expressy, and you felt amazing. And to be fair, I, I really enjoy the uh, the core route, the, the York to Manchester bit. That's my favourite bit. But it was just really nice to, uh, you know, get absolutely belting up the East Coast. There we go, guards given us two. So off we go. So uh, coming out of here, 50 mile an hour, we need to stick below that, but I don't see that full power won't be a problem. I don't think that it will be a problem, sorry. ease off a little bit because I think we're going to get to 50 before the uh, before the speed limit. There we go, cross over onto the fast now and then we can absolutely open up the taps and go way whizzing off. There we go, 125 mile an hour, here we come. Or maybe not, seeing as the maximum speed is, uh, is 100. But we can give it a damn good go, can't we? What you also find as well with this, a couple of people have complained about the uh, the field of view, and uh, I I usually drive uh, with the default view. I know that some people like to drive if we look on camera options, like all the way out here, and uh, there we go back, and they're like, oh, it looks like you're really really far away, and it, it looks distorted and weird. See, I don't like to drive like that. I always just drive on default. But I find that this is more zoomed out, so it's why people's cameras are looking weird. Because they need to zoom themselves back in. Because if you zoom out to this level of zoomed outiness, on the 158 for instance, then when you load the 185 you'll be way back there, super zoomed out. There we go. I need to actually add my finger on this button because we're going to flip and miss it, aren't we? I've got that feeling. Come on, 185. I can't believe how far it is from Thirsk to York. You uh, you don't really kind of notice, because at this point you're normally in the train having an argument with someone. Uh, a particular favourite is um, there's there's Grand Central only tickets. And, uh, you know, it's good if you're travelling with Grand Central, because they're a fraction of the cost. They're, they're really, really good value with Grand Central only tickets. But the problem is, is that you, you get people 
that wouldn't necessarily read what it said on the ticket machine. Uh, you know, when they pop to Thursk, oh, can I have a ticket? I don't know why they'd go to the machine and say, can I have a ticket? Because uh, if you went to the ticket office, they'd normally say, oh, are you going on the next train? And if you said yes, then they wouldn't sell you a Grand Central only for obvious reasons. Um, but if you went to the machine, you'd say, oh, that's a nice cheap one. Click that nice seven pound one, because I think it were about 14 quid from Thursk. Mm, maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember. But And then they get on the Transpennine train, and you, you, you go down and you'd be like, oh, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry. You know, you, you didn't have to be an ass about it. No, but I'm, I'm really, really sorry, but that ticket's not correct for this. And then they'd be, what? What do you mean? I've, I've paid money already. And it, it, so that, that was the problem. But by the time you were having all that discussion with people, and, uh, you know, and, and it, sometimes you had to have it quite a few times going down the train. By the time you'd actually had that discussion with people, uh, it, it didn't feel like 20 miles, it really didn't. Sometimes between Thursk and York, these, the, you know, you just kept busy uh, dealing with people that you wouldn't have all the tickets done by the time you got to York. You think, God, how slow must you be going if you've not got everything done in 20 miles? But honestly, when, you, when you're there, the time just flies by, it really does. I do kind of feel like I'm cheating putting it in uh, in speed set and just motoring along. Uh, there is an advanced speed set as well, but I always forget how to do that. I feel like it would uh, the advanced speed set would work a lot better if I had one of the train sim controllers. Uh, I need to set up like a GoFundMe page for that because I would absolutely love one of the train sim controllers. Uh, incidentally, if you do wish to donate any money to the channel so I can uh, invest in well, invest in, in new technology, new games, add-ons. Uh, the, the controllers, then there is a link in the description if you do wish to uh, to, to pop a donation over. Uh, as much or as little as you want, that would be always appreciated, uh, but you need to pop into that, uh, that PayPal link there to do that. <coughs> I should really set up like some sort of Patreon style thing where, uh, where you get access to videos early or you get extra things like a badge that says Joe thinks I'm amazing. Because uh, I do think you're all amazing, you're all fantastic, especially if you've got this far. I mean, flipping hell, have you got nothing better to do with your afternoon than sit and watch me waffle on? Well, evidently not. It might not even be afternoon, but uh, yeah, I, I genuinely do think you're all amazing for uh, for giving me the time of day. Taking time out of your busy schedules to come and, uh, you know, come and support the channel, it's always appreciated. Nope. Oh. Get the uh, get the old DSD cancelled. We're uh, we're running dangerously close to. Uh, I can never remember how many seconds you get when you press the DSD, but uh, yeah, running dangerously close to uh, to to dropping it and having to come to an emergency stop. I mean, you can kind of understand as to why uh, why a lot of drivers consider this part of route uh, or this part of the route quite boring. I mean, it's it's quite straight, isn't it? It's it's an absolutely fantastic bit of route, but it is very straight, and you know, there's not a lot to see. I mean, I'm just looking out for the sign. I might have missed it to be honest with you, because I was looking at uh, I was looking ahead. But there is actually a sign down here, and if uh, if we get a chance, we'll pop out the cab and have a look at it. I'm not convinced though that I've not gone past it already. I think it's quite a way north of York. Uh, oh, hang on, what's coming the other way? 185, that'll be the 8 minutes past Newcastle. Look at that go. Brilliant. He'll be racing along up to Newcastle, won't he? No messing about.
Come on. No, nope. I thought it wasn't going to press there. We're pressing the button and nothing were happening. Crossovers there. Obviously, you can go onto the freight line. Well, it's not really a freight line, is it? It's it's a slow line. There are times where I've gone down those lines on uh, on a 185. You tend to find, particularly coming south by this point, you're normally on the fast after Thursk. Is that Tolerton crossover? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember to tell you the truth. I know it's kind of round here somewhere, but it might have been uh, might have been back there. Oh, look at that. Bit better. Bit more on it. Well, a bit more on it than what I was, anyway. There we go. Oh, hang on, hang on. Right, there we go. Look. Nearly missed it. There we go. So halfway between Edinburgh and London. Which, weirdly enough, is north of York. I mean, that's just nuts, isn't it? I always thought that halfway would be like Doncaster. But you don't quite appreciate how far it is from Newcastle to Edinburgh. It's like an hour and a half on the train. It's absolutely crackers. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We're past the halfway point. So technically, if you want to split hairs, we are in the south of Great Britain. Ooh, now isn't that a frightening prospect? Uh, yeah, we are in the south of Great Britain, if you count in Scotland. Actually, no, hang on. Well, yeah, you will be. We will be, won't we? Because, uh... No, hang on. I don't know if I'm working that out there correctly. Well, between Edinburgh and London, anyway. Uh, don't forget, like, Brighton, and then if you want to add on all the way up to Inverness. Yeah, we're probably in the south half of, uh, south half of Great Britain. We're not counting Ireland or Northern Ireland, because that doesn't count uh, in this kind of little shindig. Because it doesn't help either way, but yeah. Oh, now, that's a frightening prospect. Like I said, being in the south. Oh, dear me. No, no, I think I think that sign must be wrong. The sign lies. We're, uh, we are very much in the north. I mean, it's not called North Yorkshire for no reason, is it? There you go because it's just so very north. Not only is it Yorkshire, but it's North Yorkshire, the northest of the Yorkshires. Yeah, I don't really know where I'm going with this. We're just talking for the sake of talking. I've, uh, I've been on early, so I'm kind of feeling a little bit delirious now, which is perhaps not the best time to drive a train, uh, or simulate driving a train, whilst also trying to sound vaguely interesting at the same time. Uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm up at, uh, what time am I up? The alarm's set for 02.50 tomorrow, good lord. Uh, which means it'll be nice and dark uh, when my alarm goes off. And uh, I believe I'm off to Preston tomorrow, isn't that exciting? I quite like going to Preston, to be honest with you. Ooh, are, we, uh, are we catching up some sort of other train? We've got a, a single yellow there. I don't know if we're catching it up or if it's just going to merge in, because I know we're not that far off York now. We're uh, running four miles, just over four miles. There we go. Get it, uh, get it registered nice and quick. Oh, hang on, yellow signal. Woo. Oh, there's the middle spread. I think that horn sound is perhaps a little bit quiet. I, uh, I did actually, to be fair, that, that could potentially be my fault. I did say, I will get you some more horn sounds, but, uh, I, I, yeah, I've, uh, I've forgot. So, uh, yeah, okay, Joe, stop criticising the horn. It's your own fault. Let's, uh, let's get a bit of 20 on. Or maybe a bit more, actually, because I've realised that I've just gone through a double yellow and done nothing about it, you know, carrying on motoring at 80 miles an hour. Oh, there we go, another double yellow. That's fine, we'll just pop it on 20% braking. Just the minimums. 
and the reason for that is uh, we've just been past Skeleton Bridge Junction. Uh, that's not the reason we're on double yellows, but uh, I've, I've already spoken to Harry and he said that the reason is, or the reason behind that is, that uh, at Skelton Junction, which is just further down here, a train from Harrogate has actually pulled in in front of us. Very cheeky of it, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, that's why we're checked down to the uh, to the yellows. So we'll be following in that train all the way to, uh, all, I say all the way to York. It's not that far really, is it? There we go. We'll uh, we'll slow down to we'll slow down to about forty six. That'll do. So the next signal's red, so we'll uh, we'll carry on slowing down. There we go. So that's the line on the right there that comes from Poppleton. Uh, I do believe it's single track at that point when it goes off, or maybe it's not. I, uh, I I struggle to remember to tell you the truth. What's that down there? Oh, it's a sixty six. Oh, lovely. And uh, I can see that that signal's showing a single yellow, so we'll uh, just get a bit of power back on. Oh, for some reason I've not got the branding patch on the uh, on the Freightliner wagons. Why have they not got branding on? Oh, pay attention, Joe. There we go. So we're, uh, we'll be coming into platform 10 at York. Excellent. I've not been off platform 10 in so long now. I like how it's got the regenerative braking, so when you brake it, the engines kind of rev up. It's it's just oh, it's just lovely. It's such a good train to drive. I mean, if you want, if you wanted my honest opinion, if you were, oh, I, I don't know if I should get it, Joe, or I don't know if I should perhaps not bother. I would absolutely, and it's not me being biased here. I would say go and get it because whilst it's not perfect, it's better than no one eight five. You know, and to be fair, as I say that it's better than no one eight five. That kind of makes it sound a bit like. Oh, well, it's you know it's not very good, but it'll do. That's not the case at all. It's an absolutely brilliant piece of kit, and that's probably why it's so expensive. You know, twenty four ninety nine for a train is quite expensive. There's there's no getting away from that. But it's so in depth with the systems and things that you've got available to you. It's I would say it was worth the price. I really would. That's just my personal opinion. Um, you know, you might think otherwise. You might have bought this and driven it, and I find that a lot of people. Um, that are there's quite a few complaints by the looks of things that have gone in over my god how how expensive is that but this is you know this is easily I'd, I'd say more in depth than the 460 the 460 is one of the most comprehensive add-ons that we have I'd say this was more in depth particularly because you've got the announcements you can listen to that on your own time go watch someone else's video because I'm not putting my own voice on there no it's not happening uh, but yeah, um, I would say it was worth the price, particularly if you're a subscriber. And uh, so yeah, go out and buy it if you haven't already. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I forgot, we've come past the depot in the National Rail Museum. And there is actually uh, something outside. There we go, there's a Deltic and, uh, and another Deltic and a 37 and uh, a 185 sat on the depot. How lovely. I've just realised I'm going really slowly into York. Never mind. There's, uh, oh, what's that? That's an East Coast HST. I do miss seeing them at York. And, uh, oh, look, a, a 150 stroke one. Lovely. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And uh, for some reason, I must be missing an asset here. I really don't know why I'm coming in so slowly. Uh, yeah, I must be missing an asset because the bridge has disappeared at York. It's fallen down, look. It's not good. There we go. We'll just, uh, we'll just cruise straight in. Now, uh, obviously, the new scenario or the next scenario, because it's a, I'd have to load a completely different route. It may have. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. I've accidentally paused it. There we go. It might spawn me in somewhere different. Oh, that's a shame. It didn't load correctly. Oh, he's missing scenario stuff. There we go. Right. So uh, that's us for today. I do hope you've enjoyed part one. Make sure that you uh, subscribe if you haven't already so that you get notified when part two comes out. Part two will be York down to Leeds. 
If you have enjoyed this video, then click the like button because it helps. If a lot of people like it, it will suggest it to more people who might subscribe and then Joe will do more train sim things. I mean, we're going to be covering this 185 so much because I absolutely love the thing. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, fingers crossed, I shall see you next time. Cheerio. Goodbye for now.